lot of you are not ordering coffee correctly. This is why some of you end up with a beverage that you don't want or don't like. If there's one thing that I, your barista best friend, feel responsible for is finding you the perfect coffee-based drink. So fear not. I'm here to teach you how to properly order coffee at a coffee shop for those of my friends who have little to no barista experience. For my other friends who are baristas or have been baristas, if there's anything in this video that I leave out, please drop it below. And let's continue to help our friends that don't have that good, juicy coffee shop experience. Emphasis on the juicy. Right off the bat, when you enter into a coffee shop, you're gonna look at the menu board, and you're gonna see a few different names that you've probably never seen before, such as macchiato, americano. These words may confuse the hell out of you, and rightfully so. I'm gonna give you a high level understanding of what each of these coffee beverages drinks, names mean, so that when you're ordering, you know exactly what you're getting. Number one, drip coffee. It is what it is, it's drip coffee. It's normal coffee brewed in a machine, served to you with cream or sugar, optional. That, th that's it, that's literally what it is. Two, a latte. A latte is an espresso-based beverage that gets frothy milk as well as one to two ounces of espresso depending on the size that you're ordering. We'll get into that a little bit later on. A latte is built to be espresso, milk, and a thin layer of foam at the top. This is a very standard coffee drink. Three, a cappuccino. A cappuccino is very similar to a latte, but the way in which the milk is frothed or aerated is a little bit different. Aeration means to add air. So when you hear that like paper, tearing sound coming from the espresso machine steam wand, the barista is aerating the milk. They're introducing air into the milk to get it a little bit more frothy. Like I said for our latte build, a latte build is espresso, milk, and a thin layer of foam. The difference between a latte and a cappuccino is the way that the milk is aerated. So with a cappuccino, you'll be getting your espresso, but the milk is going to be a little bit foamier, a little bit frothier. That's because your barista is aerating the milk for longer in a cappuccino than they are in a latte. I'll throw some photos up here on the screen to help your understanding in case I am making literally no sense or it sounds like I'm speaking a foreign language to you. The next one is an Americano. For those of you who enjoy drip coffee and you don't really want milk or you know that frothy cappuccino milk maybe an americano is the best option for you an americano build is just espresso and hot water that's it there's no milk that goes into it unless you the customer requests it moving on to macchiatos macchiatos this is an interesting one our friendly faces at starbucks have kind of turned traditional macchiatos into this new phenomenon that other people try to go to more traditional coffee shops to order and they're very surprised when they don't end up with a macchiato that's like a starbucks macchiato when you're ordering a macchiato at starbucks or more of a mainstream coffee shop really the biggest difference between a latte and a macchiato is that in a latte the shots go on the bottom in a macchiato the shots go on top iced coffees and cold brews these are two of the easiest drinks to make behind the counter. We'll get into this a little bit later, but basically the difference between iced coffee and cold brew is that iced coffee is typically prepared as a medium roast. It's a little bit more acidic. It's a little stronger in flavor, whereas a cold brew is steeped for 20 hours, 17 to 20 hours on average, giving it a much smoother and less acidic flavor. Now, in a cold brew, more often than not, you will end up with more caffeine because it is steeped for a much longer period of time than iced coffee is. What it really comes down to with iced coffees and cold brews is your preference, your flavor preferences and your caffeine preferences as well. Those are the most common coffee beverages that you will find on pretty much every coffee shop's menu wherever you go. A latte, cappuccino, and Americano is very different though from a drip coffee, iced coffee, and cold brew. Why is that? Because these guys over here are espresso based. They need to be prepared with the espresso machine. The method of brewing espresso is very different from the method of brewing cold brew or drip coffee. Espresso is strong, so be realistic when you are ordering a coffee beverage. If you like the flavor of coffee, but you don't like it to be super strong, then perhaps go with more of an iced coffee, cold brew, something of that sort, and maybe stray away from espresso-based beverages. For those of you who are like me and absolutely love espresso, I get you, I see you, I hear you, I validate you. I'm an espresso girly through and through. However, one thing that I've noticed from being a barista all these years is that Espresso lingo confuses people. When you go into a coffee shop, you may see different espresso options on the menu. Those might say singolo or single, doppio, double, 
triple, quad. If you see singolo or single on the menu, that is referring to one shot of espresso. One shot of espresso is equal to one ounce. Dopio means two shots of espresso or two ounces. Triple means three or three ounces and quad means four or four ounces. You may also see different options for espresso on the menu. My current cafe, and just like my older cafes as well, we offered classic espresso, blonde espresso, and decaf espresso. Each of those espresso blends has its own unique flavor notes, and that's gonna depend on the coffee shop that you go to, where they get their beans from, the way that they're roasted, etc. But baseline is a classic espresso is going to be bold. It's going to be more of like a medium roast. A blonde espresso is going to be a lighter roast. So in some cases, it can be a little more citrusy. There is a little bit more caffeine in a blonde espresso compared to a classic espresso because of the way that the bean is roasted. Lighter roast coffees, lighter roast blends typically have more caffeine, even if it is very marginal. Less roasting time means the bean keeps as much caffeine as it can. Decaf is decaf, it's whatever the bean is. It's decaf. Okay, so I just gave you a high level overview over some common coffee shop beverages, as well as how the rundown of espresso goes. Let's talk a little bit about milks though. You have an array of milks to choose from. For my non-dairy friends, typically coffee shops will carry almond, oat, soy, coconut. Sometimes they may carry a cashew or something a little more special to their menu, but those are the big four is what I call them. Usually in coffee shops, either 2% or whole milk is standard for lattes, cappuccinos. If you are somebody who is looking for a non-dairy option, when you are ordering coffee, you need to explicitly say what the milk choice you are looking for is. Otherwise, you may end up with a drink that is standard, and standard is either 2% or whole milk, depending on where you are. I'd also like to remind you that different milks can actually change the overall flavor profile of a beverage. Coconut milk obviously has a very distinct flavor. It's coconutty. And I always try to warn people that if they're ordering some sort of beverage where coconut notes may not agree super well with the flavor or flavors in the drink, to maybe opt for a different milk other than coconut. Otherwise, it may change the entire flavor of the drink. In the same way that different milks can change the flavor profile of a drink, they can also change the overall texture and consistency of a drink as well. The next thing I wanna go over is how different sizes warrant different ratios. A bigger size, a larger size, does not always mean more coffee, more caffeine. I'm using Starbucks as sort of a general example, but a lot of people think when they're ordering a venti latte or a venti cappuccino that they're getting more coffee, more caffeine, but they're not because the espresso ratio is the same for a grande size and a venti size. So when you order a venti, you're actually paying for more milk. In addition to espresso and milk ratios, there are also ratios when it comes to flavors, sauces, syrups. Every coffee shop follows a different standard. At Starbucks, there are X amount of pumps that go into each drink, that's standard. So if you are somebody that doesn't like your coffee super sweet, communicate that with the barista and figure out what their sort of standard flavoring ratios are so you don't end up with a drink that is overly sweet. Requesting your beverage to be half sweet or cut back on the sweetness is the quickest way to ensure you are getting exactly what you want. In addition to more artificial flavors, there are more natural flavors that are typically available at a cafe, such as honey, agave, cocoa powder, cinnamon powder. If you're looking for more of a natural flavor route versus like an artificial vanilla or hazelnut, that might be, that might be your vibe. Listen, honey, there is nothing better than an agave latte or a honey cinnamon latte. Oh, chef's kiss. I wanna circle back to drip coffee for just a moment because this is one of the most popular coffee beverages ordered in a coffee shop. Shocker. Same thing applies. Light roast is gonna be more of an acidic, citrusy flavor. Medium roast is gonna be a little bit more robust. It's gonna have maybe some chocolate notes or caramel notes. And a dark roast, well, dark roast is just, it's just dark roast. I'm personally not a huge dark roast fan because of the bold flavor. That's not really my cup of joe, if you will, but I love a medium roast and I really love a light roast as well. When you order a drip coffee at a coffee shop, if you don't specifically tell the barista to have room or no room in the coffee, the standard is no room. What does that mean? Room is referring to the amount of room at the top of the cup 
that the barista will leave for you to pour cream into your coffee after they hand it off to you. No room means that they will fill your coffee, your drip coffee, all the way to the top, ensuring that there's no room for cream. Please, please, please ask for room in your coffee if you are somebody who enjoys adding cream to it. I can't tell you the amount of times that us as baristas, we hate watching people dump their hot coffee into the garbage can on the bar. It's a mess. It gets messy. Someone's gotta clean that up. Instead of doing that, either one, tell the barista off the bat that you're looking for room in your coffee, or two, walk back up to the counter and request room in your coffee so that we can dump it into the sink and not into the garbage. Let's talk a little bit about my favorite topic, water croutons, icicles, ice. I'm gonna just give a little PSA real quick. I'm gonna expose us coffee shops for just a moment. Most coffee shops will fill up your ice drink with mostly ice. It is an option to request light ice on your ice drinks to ensure that you get more liquid more coffee, more cold brew, more iced coffee, more milk, more espresso, whatever the case may be. I actually request all of my iced drinks with extra ice, but I just request that they put it in a larger size cup to make sure that I'm getting my extra ice because I like my drinks cold. I like my drinks very cold. I'm not a light ice girl. Last thing, just like cocktails, just like alcohol, neat means no ice. So if you order a neat iced latte, you will not be getting any ice. The last couple things that I'm gonna run through for this video is tea lattes. Tea lattes exist for those of you who maybe don't like coffee or don't want coffee, but you're still looking for a little bit, a lot of bit of caffeine. London fog, chai lattes, turmeric chai lattes, matcha lattes, those are all tea-based drinks, tea lattes. A London Fog is Earl Grey tea, vanilla, and milk. A matcha latte is green tea powder and milk. <laughs> chais and turmeric chais are the chai concentrates and milk. Tea lattes are a perfect, perfect option for those of you who don't want coffee but you still want caffeine. If all else fails and you do not want a tea latte, you don't want an espresso-based drink, cold brew, iced coffee, whatever, if all else fails, most coffee shops have iced teas and refreshers or their version of a refresher available to you. Look at the menu or ask your barista what they have available, but every coffee shop accounts for people that don't necessarily want coffee. That pretty much concludes my high level overview of coffee shop menus. We can get more into the nitty gritty in the future if that's something you guys are interested in, but I just wanted to give you a general understanding of how coffee shop menus work, what some of these drinks mean, what some of these ratios look like. Yeah, that's about it. Happy ordering you guys. Let me know if you have any questions and I'm excited for you to find your perfect coffee beverage. Be kind to a barista, be kind to yourself, and I'll see you guys next time.